professor at uh, Renault. And you just heard about benchmarking from her group. Now I'm going to hear about debugging these microservices in. <coughs> Okay. 
action by upscaling all saturated microservices. Unfortunately, because it is not aware of the impact of dependencies between microservices, it takes a long time to find the one responsible for the QoS violation, and by that point, the bottlenecks are propagating towards the front end. Eventually, it will find the right outbreak for a QoS violation, but for a long time, the system is operating in a degraded state. Instead, in this work, we propose uh, SEER, which is a proactive data-driven system for performance debugging that turns performance debugging into a pattern matching problem. SEER leverages a massive amount of traces data centers collect today about applications that they run, and a set of practical machine learning techniques to recognize patterns that signal upcoming quality of service violations <coughs> early enough to notify the cluster manager so that it can take action and avoid the QoS violation altogether. To do that, SEER uses a two-level tracing infrastructure. At a high level, it uses a distributed RPC-level tracing system, similar to Dapper from Google or Zipkin, which is open source from Twitter. And this tracing system collects the breakdown of latencies over requests as it is traversing the dependency graph of microservices. Apart from latency across microservices, this also breaks down latency within a microservice to identify overheads relating to the networking stack, operating systems, libraries, and other dependencies a microservice might have. Also, in addition to latencies, we collect the uh, length of the queue ahead of each microservice, so the number of outstanding requests across microservices and within a microservice. And we verify that the overhead of the tracing system is negligible in terms of throughput and in terms of the latency. Now, once problematic microservices are identified, we use a second, lower, more detailed level of tracing that has to do with per node hardware monitoring. Now, depending on whether we're operating on a private cluster or a public cluster, this relies on performance counters or contentious microbenchmarks, respectively, and I will talk more about that later. The reason why we don't only want to use per node hardware monitoring is because utilization doesn't always correlate well with the latency, and using this kind of monitoring at high frequency across the entire cluster can introduce significant problems. Now, once Zero obtains this tracing information, it uses it to train a set of practical machine learning techniques to recognize patterns that signal upcoming QoS violations. The technique that I'm showing on the slide is that of a deep neural network. And all those simpler techniques can also be applied for the same problem. In fact, in the paper, we have a um, comparison with techniques like logistic regression and classification. There are a few good reasons why a DNN is a good fit for this problem. First, it's architectural agnostic, so it doesn't require the user to describe the impact of each pairwise dependency between microservices. Second, it can adjust the changes over time as new microservices are added to the system and old ones are replaced, which is very frequent with microservices. And finally, it offers high accuracy good scalability and inference within the window of opportunity that we have to notify the cluster manager to take action. So we train this neural network and the output signal is uh, inferring the probability that a given microservice will initiate a QoS violation in the near future. And note that this is a harder problem than signaling microservices that will be saturated in the near future on the root cause that initiated the QoS That is the output signal. In terms of the input signal, there are a few different options that one would use. One would be the utilization of the containers running these microservices, another would be latency, another would be the number of outstanding requests. Uh, a lot of previous work has already shown that utilization is not a good proxy for performance, but both latency and the number of outstanding requests correlate well with the probability for a QoS violation. For the remaining of this talk, I will show results for which we are using the number of outstanding requests. In the paper, we also have the same analysis for using latency. And finally, when it comes to the configuration of the network, the number of input and output neurons is the number of active microservices in the cluster, ordered by dependency order on the dependency graph, to reveal any spatial patterns in their dependencies. Um, the network first has a small number of convolutional layers to perform to reduce the dimensionality of the dependency graph filter out noisy microservices that might have performance issues, but are not on the critical path. Followed by some layers of an LSTN network that are used to predict the state of the cluster in the near future. In the paper, we have a more detailed uh, evaluation of trade-offs between different configurations of the network. I'll give you just a high-level bit here, uh, comparing the hybrid network that we use for the rest of the evaluation versus the purely CMM and a purely LSTN. The CNN is considerably faster, however, CNNs work better for finding patterns in space, not predicting uh, future states, so its prediction accuracy is relatively low. The LSDM has significantly higher accuracy, but it gets affected by noisy microservices that may have performance issues but are not on the critical path. And finally, the hybrid network has higher accuracy. It pays for it in slightly higher inference time, but
but it is well within the window of opportunity. We have to notify the cluster manager to take action. When it comes to the validation study, uh, training from scratch happens once, and it can be slow. It can take hours, up to days, for clusters that exceed thousands of, uh, of servers. Training happens across load levels, load distributions, and different types of requests. And the training data set includes distributed traces annotated with QoS violations. And in order to ensure that the annotations are correct, we force controlled QoS violations in the system by injecting contentious micro benchmarks on a randomly selected subset of active microservices. Weights and biases are inferred using stochastic gradient descent, and importantly, we don't want to retrain the entire network every time new microservices are added, so SEER supports incremental retraining and a dynamic case of expanding and shrinking number of microservices. Uh, so that's for training, inference happens continuously as traces are collected from the system and streamed through it. Uh, we use a 20 server cluster, it's a dedicated cluster for the validation study, it has different server configurations, tens of cores and hundreds of gigabytes of memory per server. And for the applications, we're using four of the end-to-end -end applications you heard about in the previous talk. Each of them has a few tens of unique microservices, and the functionality they implement are social network, media service, an e-commerce site, and a button system. I won't go over all the applications again, I'll just show you an example in case you missed the previous talk. So this is the dependency graph for the social network application. From left to right, client requests arrive. They first hit the front-end tiers, then the logic tiers, and finally, the back-end databases, in-memory, and persistent storage. The other applications also use them. So in terms of, a, of the validation results, what I'm showing here is the fraction of false negatives and false positives as we change the prediction window that we want from C. From a few tens of milliseconds up to several seconds. So if we're trying to predict very quickly, you know, very, a very short prediction window, just a few tens of milliseconds into the future, uh, as you would expect, the number of false positives and false negatives is low because we're using a very up-to-date state of the cluster to make these predictions. Unfortunately, this also means that we don't have enough time to notify the cluster manager to take action. So also, although the detection accuracy is high, the QoS violation prevention accuracy is low. At the other end, if we try to predict too far into the future, again, unsurprisingly, the number of false negatives and false positives is significantly higher because a lot of QoS violations happen because of really short bursts in the number of outstanding requests. Now, once we identify problematic microservices in a large cluster, we need to figure out what caused them to become problematic. And the methodology for that varies depending on whether we are <coughs> in a private cluster versus a public cluster. In a private cluster, we use performance counters and utilization monitors to distinguish between bottleneck resources and non-bottleneck resources. In a public cluster, where access to performance counters is still limited, we use a set of contentious micro benchmarks to distinguish between resources that affect the performance of a given microservice from those that don't. Once we identify the problematic resource, we use one out of several resource part partitioning and isolation mechanisms to adjust the allocation of that resource and ideally avoid the QoS violation altogether. And this range from power management mechanisms like RAPL to cache partitioning, memory capacity partitioning, network bandwidth, and storage by your bandwidth partitioning. Now, there are also QoS violations that don't have anything to do with resource allocation, but have to do with application level bugs. And CR can signal such QoS violations once it eliminates all resource-related reasons. <laughs> However, to actually debug the application, we still require a human to intervene and uh, fix the application. Okay. So let me show you a quick demo of how this works, uh, how CR works compared to a traditional performance debugging system that only takes action after a QoS violation happens by upscaling saturated microservices. As before, we will use the social network application. From left to right, we have front-end tiers, logic tiers, and backend databases. Each of the yellow dots corresponds to the number of outstanding requests for that microservice, and each container only has a single microservice. The darker the color is, the more outstanding requests for that microservice. The purple ring shows the CPU utilization of that container. The fuller the ring is, the higher the CPU utilization for that microservice. And finally, the bottom, I'm showing again day latency compared to QoS. If the dot is blue, QoS is met. If the dot is red, QoS is white. <coughs> so let's see how it works. Oh, so initially requests are starting to flow through the system. If you see containers towards the right side that have some utilization without the request having reached them yet, it's because they are loading the dependencies and performing the handshakes with their dependent microservices. So at this case, uh, both systems, both here and the default system, 
are experiencing good performance, relatively low utilization, not very long queues, uh, but they still have some blips of, of quick uh, quality of service violations. In the case of SEER, this is most likely because it hasn't seen a similar pattern before, so it cannot anticipate it, or the QS violation is caused by a really sharp uh, increase in the number of outstanding requests, which is outside its prediction. Now, at this point, the system on the right is starting to experience pretty significant increases in its stay latency. So the moment the QS violation happens, the performance debugging system will kick in and try to upscale any saturated microsupsites, any uh, saturated microservices. Again, because it is not aware of the impact of dependencies between pairwise microservices, it takes a long time for that to take effect. And by that point, the bottleneck is moving towards the front end, as seen by the darker colors of yellow. So eventually, it will find the correct culprit of the QoS violation, and from that point on, the latency should, should start decreasing and going back to non -conference. Finally, to study the scalability of SEER, we also evaluate a large-scale deployment <coughs> of one of our end-to-end -end applications, the social network application. And this is using real traffic of about 580 users, both internally at Cornell and externally that use it as a social network. And at the time, this was from a two-month uh, at the same time, because this is running over several hundreds of instances on Google Compute Engine, we also had to rewrite our machine learning pipeline and offload it on Google TPUs, which gave us a significant performance benefit, one to two orders of magnitude for training and for inputs. And what I'm showing in the figure is the number of QS violations per day over this two-month period. And although there are spikes later on, usually coinciding with significant reorganizations of the application structure, Overall, the pattern is that the number of QoS violations decreases as more and more <coughs> of the patterns are found by SEER. And this doesn't only include research-related patterns, but also application-level bugs that SEER help us um, isolate, like login RPCs, live blog, shared data structures, and site dependencies. So to conclude, microservices are becoming increasingly popular, primarily thanks to the help that their, thanks to the fact that their modularity uh, helps manage the complexity of large-scale applications. This also means, however, that traditional performance debugging systems that only act after a QS violation happens are no longer sufficient to address the performance predictability requirements. In this work, we present SEER, which leverages the massive amount of trace data collected by data centers today, and a set of practical machine learning techniques to identify patterns that signal upcoming quality of service violations. <coughs> we show that the detection accuracy is, is quite high, and SEER is able to avoid the majority of QS violations altogether. More importantly, it can provide insight on how to better design and deploy these complex applications, providing practical solutions for systems to still make previous empirical approaches in practice. So with that, thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions.